We are very conscious in the Rapid Learning Cycles framework about how we use language uh, so that we are able to talk with innovators um, in ways that make sense to them, um, in ways that are in alignment with uh, what most innovators care about, uh, which is that I have a great idea, I want to get it out there in the world, I want my customers to use it and benefit from it, I want my, my company to get value from it. And that's true whether you're an entrepreneur working at a startup or whether you're um, inside you know, an engineering group, a corporate R&D group, you know, um, there's, if you're attracted to product development, especially early product development, then um, that desire to see your ideas manifested in the world um, is a very powerful one. And so there's things that we can do from a language perspective to uh, work with that um, to help uh, make rapid learning cycles an easier thing to put into an organization and an easier thing to sustain. And if you want... So if we want to be successful as a company, we need individual projects to be successful. Um, and, and for this, we use the core hypothesis. Um, the validation of the core hypothesis is actually our, our vehicle to get ownership for the project success in the project teams. So the, the project team can no longer say, okay, I made some agreement, I have a fixed scope and I will just execute that. And, and the responsibility for whether we deliver at the end uh, something that we can actually sell that responsibility. Um, often the teams think that responsibility lies at, at management, um, but we would like to put that ownership in the project teams. So, so we want to awaken the entrepreneurship in the project team. Uh, um, also, we, as I said, changing the purpose uh, slightly was uh, was a success for us. Uh, we did stick to the fundamentals, uh, making the learning early and, and changing decisions, uh, timing as, as late as possible, but still uh, in time for for the next uh, activities. It is is uh, of course something we we uh, we did not touch, but. But uh, st the structure and, and the tool also, it's always nice to, um, if we can, use tools that, that people are familiar with when we uh, interact, uh, even though that we, we keep the rapid learning cycle as, as the umbrella for, for the work that, that is going on. My, my question is, uh, is about the reason uh, for you to implement RLC. Um, did you choose to, to look for uh, a method like ROC because you were going to do the Better Bed project or was there some other reason uh, within your company that drove you to uh, look for a method like this? Um, so we have again our, our kind of standard stage gate process and I think it's pretty well defined and, and we can do that when it's things that we've done repeatedly and it's maybe a variation of, of what we've done in the past. but. We needed to find a way that on these non-standard projects, how do we get through them and how do we get through them qu quickly? We, our team needs to understand quick and fast doesn't mean that you're rushing through it. It just means that we're keeping our momentum and able to start a project and, and, and finish it and then move on to the next um, improvement opportunity to give us more of a standard plan for these improvement opportunities. This talks about, you put all your questions out and you're getting them prioritized. And you can't, when you have a ton of questions, part of part of that um, process of putting the knowledge gaps together is really to kind of filter out what should I be working on now, next, or maybe not at all. Um, and then. The, the direct link between rapid learning cycles and the and our current main project management system, which so we put the key decision dates into that and can track the, therefore the, the macroscopic program uh, with that. Uh, we're looking at the percentage of uh, knowledge gaps with high criticality closed on time before their key decision as a, as a metric for uh, health of the project, speed of the project, lower down. And Imagine that you're looking at, at a whiteboard in a meeting room and then I start sketching out 
what you see in, in front of you. Yeah, and um, basically it's it's a it's a graphic chart. And the most important thing I believe on the whole rapid learning cycle is the basic question: What do we need to know to make our decisions with ease? What do we? Where can we start on? What what can we start on today uh, to make um, yeah tough decisions in in, the, in with ease in the future? And if you look. Of course, the concept here, and this is another one of Catherine's slides that I really love, is the concept is the learning cycle events and the integration events. I can actually create, and it's not post-it notes, it's not digital post-it notes, but I can create a, a version of the learning cycle plan that is very effective in using and managing for all of our teams. And we can run our learning cycle event and our integration event meetings using the tool. So to me, that's really powerful. And then this is a couple uh, slide examples of sprinkled throughout our Stagecape template. We use the RLC language. Um, we have key decisions that were made in the past and maybe if there's some that are open, those are kind of like your knowledge deficits. And then not all decisions need to be made um, immediately. Some decisions we're waiting until we down select on the, on the design or the bill of materials. And so that's like our Stagecape 3. We're not there yet. We don't need to decide, but to make it clear, we can't make it today because there are some critical knowledge gaps that we need to better understand before we make that decision. And by showing it this way, it gives the discussion on, huh, there's something else, a faster way we can get that knowledge. Maybe there's an alternate way. Um, maybe there's something else you should know before you make the decision. So it changes the discussion into a more useful kind of conversation in that way. So initially we were converts and and initially we used rapid learning cycles for everything and we had some issues. It, it took a bit of frustration but we came to learn that the, the bread knife is, is best for cutting a loaf of bread, the filleting knife is for filleting, the craft knife is for cutting paper, and the pocket knife can do lots of jobs, but it, it doesn't do doesn't do anything well. Okay. We were applying rapid learning cycles in, in areas where there was already tried and tested methods. So the teams were having weren't having the best experiences, and the PLTs were having troubles trying to to make it fit. So, like the bread knife, rapid learning cycles can be used in other areas, but. The most benefits are seen in the role where, where it's been designed for, those, those high cost to change, high uncertainty projects. And we, we have and do use rapid learning cycles in other areas and it works well. But those, those high, 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 high quadrant um, really is where you get the most benefit from rapid learning cycles.